Hi, oh, hi everyone, my name is Coco. Thank you, Jackson, for saying one, I'm one of your favorite speakers. I bet you have many, but I'm still flattered. <laughs> um, so today I'm going to give the talk about open art. But instead of wooing you with more advanced AI features, I actually want to share some interesting, inspiring user stories. But I will start with my own story. So my name is Coco, I'm the CEO and co-founder of open art. Um, uh, I started my career at Google, like for, uh, I worked at Google for seven, seven years, started as a software engineer and then became a product manager. But I know that I always wanted to do a startup. So, uh, so in 2022, I finally was able to quit Google and then pursue my startup dream. I'm super happy to be, to be here to share open art with you. So we started Open art in 2022 August, just before all the AI explosion, like AI, generative AI stuff, um, exploded. And we saw so much potential and we want to do something about it. So these are the AI generated images of myself and you can easily train your own model on our platform so you can generate these two. And this is my dog Benny, Golden Doodle. And of course it's AI generated. So um, OpenArt is an AI image platform where you can uh, elevate and realize your creative vision. You can generate images from photorealistic to like animate to more uh, artistic assets. Um, but today I'm going to show you three inspiring user stories because you probably have been seeing so many features today. And uh, so these, uh, you, the reason I picked these three users is that they range from professionals, like, uh, professional artists to very, like, casual, fun users who play, like, RPG games like Dungeon and Dragon. So let's start with, uh, artist Sarah. So, uh, Sarah is a professional artist. She is a real artist that she doesn't need to take commission. Instead, she draws something, people buy it. However, one of her problems is that um, for, to draw something, she actually needs to, um, you know, have a reference, an art reference. And before she used this open art, she, she used to um, hire human models to pose for her so that, like often nude, um, to pose for her so that she can draw as, uh, she can follow these art references to draw her own images. However, she's one of the artists that's actually open-minded enough to try out AI-generated images. So when I talked to her, she has been using our platform for months to generate these like AI art images as her own art references. Note that this is not like copying what AI does. In fact, she draw these references and then she would she generate images on our platform. But she will still draw them on her own canvas, digital or like physical. But she really thinks these AI image generation give her a lot of inspiration and she doesn't need to actually go to hire human models. Instead, she can use, gener gener use AI to generate hundreds of thousands of images um, and pick the best for her own reference. And let's uh, just show you some examples she, she saw. This is probably the only not safe work image you'll see today on the conference, so you should take a photo of this. <laughs> um, but later, she also realized that she could actually train her own model on our platform. And this is where I would want to quickly demo. It's really easy um, on our platform to train your own model. So if you come to AI, <laughs> AI uh, openr.ai, so you come here, train model, and you can see that you can choose like style, character, face, object, and you simply need to drag images here. Uh, I, I won't really demo, but you can see I've trained many models in the past. Just as an example, like this is a um, model I trained based on like flat illustration. And so all of these are actually AI generated images of flat illustration. So it's really inspiring for me to see like professional artists like Sarah to use like AI tools to help her to become 10 times more creative. Um, and 
Oh, oops. I really wish more artists could be open-minded to like um, to treat AI as a thinking partner and then really help them to be more creative and productive. Uh, so this is an example of another example. I use this illustration and then this is the end result. So definitely try it out later. And another user story I want to share with you is designer Kathy. Uh, however, she didn't use it for her actual design work. Uh, instead, she was publishing a kid illustration book um, because she has like um, kids that she wants to teach things and then she really wants to publish a book. And she, at first, she tried to hire human illustrators. And of course, I'm not saying that like you shouldn't use human illustrators. A lot of times you still should. But in her case, she really wants to publish a book at a relatively low cost and then relatively fast. So she started, um, when she started going to when she started sourcing the illustrators to help her, it was a very frustrating um, process because um, it's just really hard to find the illustrator that can uh, fit her style and it would take weeks for them to produce. So instead, she found open art. Uh, so these are the styles she's looking for. It's like, um, you know, cute. Uh, this is the prompt it generated. It's needle felt, cute. Obviously, it's a lamb. <laughs> um, so this is the style she was looking for. So after she realized that she could actually generate these images on our platform, she decided to um, actually create all the book illustration on our platform. And within a week, she actually created created all the illustrations she needs for her book. And she was very happy with the, uh, with the results. And, she, and then she, pu um, she published her book on Amazon. And for Kathy, because not only our platform can generate images like this, we also have like uh, other tools can really assist you uh, go further. Let me just give you an example. Let's say this is a creative variation where you already, like Kathy already generated the lamp. Oh, uh, yeah. Kathy already generated the lamp. But in this case, she really wants to see something more. Like, what else can I generate with this existing image I like? So we have this tool called Creative Variation, where you can give it an image and can really create a variation of this image. Oh, instead of generating, I'll give some examples. So. This is, this is this lamp and then I can type the same prompt and then instead of, I can say wearing glasses. So you can see it's almost the exact same lamp, but now she's wearing sunglasses. Or you can do something like this. Um, give it the, this image and then tell it uh, wear a scarf and then it can generate a lamp with a scarf. Um, so in this case, you are not only generating one image, with one image like, you can 10 times your productivity and creativity by generating a lot of images similar to that. And another really cool tool that Kathy was able to leverage is the sketch to image um, uh, thing. So this thing allows you to simply like uh, upload um, um, a sketch, like this sketch is really simple, anyone can just draw it. And then you can describe exactly what you need. So let's see, let me, uh, okay, I will just use this prompt. Oh, you can see like what glimpse of what it can generate. But let's say, um, we'll be more specific, cute pink bear. And we can choose digital style, you can even like, choose the color here. So this is an example I generated based on a sketch and then you can get an image. So really it gives you more control instead of just using text uh, like prompt to image. Okay. Well, oh, here, not bad. Yeah, as you can see, with all of the tools that are super accessible and very easy for Kathy, she was able to finish her whole book illustration within a week. Yeah, yeah, these are the examples I showed you. And 
Finally, even, um, and then we also have a lot of casual users who are not professionals because one of the key differentiators of open art is how accessible and how easy our tools are. So we're not only targeting professionals, but also targeting casual users who want to like, uh, who want to use AI images for their hobbies and for fun. And, one of the group we've noticed when we, um, you know, interview users are those RPG game players. So this is like RPG player Rick. He, you, like before open art, he has to like search on Pinterest or Google image to find like uh, some images that can represent her character in the game Dungeon and Dragon. If any of you have played it before, you know that you can invent your own character and you need pictures for those characters. But now with generative AI, instead of searching generic images on the platform, you can simply like, you know, create more custom customized and unique images. And because we've seen so much usage in the RPG player case, we actually uh, introduced a specific feature called, um, let's see. We introduced a specific feature called RPG Portrait Generator for the RPG game players. So in this case, no more complicated prompting, you just type what, exactly what you want and then you can type the frame. And we also have samples of things you can choose from and you simply just type create. Yeah, so we've observed a lot of this really interesting user behavior and then turn them into like easy to use applications. So we can see how I can show you some of the um, past generations I have. So with, with these tools for the RPG um, players like who play Dungeon and Dragon, it's really easy to just create the images that can represent the characters in their mind without knowing a lot of things about AI. Um, let's see. Yeah, I, I also want to point out like a lot of the features on our platform are free. So if you want to try it out, a lot of, um, we give 50 trial credits for the premium features, but we have like features and models that you can use permanently free. So definitely check it out after the session. So to really summarize, uh, summarize what I've told you through this user stories. Uh, I think the lessons uh, is that is really treat AI as a thinking partner, embrace it instead of, you know, fear. But I think all of you, since you come to this conference, you are already being very open-minded to all of these tools and then leverage AI as your storytelling tools. And in the end, really just have fun creating because I really think AIR is not only just for professional use cases, like you can have a lot of fun creating these images. Um, yeah, so if you are interested, you can scan the QR code here. On the left is um, our site and then on the right is uh, my LinkedIn. And you can also create this AI, uh, very artistic QR code on our platform for free. Yeah. So that's all for today. Thank you.